Welcome to a series called The End of Times, where we're going through the book of Revelation verse by verse to see what it is we can expect to happen and what it is we should be doing in the end times. And as we've gone through this book, where we are is we have made it to Revelation 16, we're at the end of 16, where the final wrath of God is being poured out in the form of seven plagues on the earth in the form of seven bowls poured out from seven angels and we're on that seventh bowl and as we've talked about that seventh bowl what has taken place is there's thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake and we're going to specifically address the earthquake uh, specifically the great city that is broken into thirds here in a moment uh, so we're just going to pick it up right there where we left off revelation 16 starting verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises, and thunderings, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And great hail from heaven fell upon men, every hailstone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of that hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. There's a lot going on in these few verses, and we're going to break it down into the pieces, because you can't just read it all together as one thing. There's a lot of events taking place in these few verses. And before we break down those events, I do want to take a moment and just remind you of the timeline. Because, you know, as we've gone through Revelation verse by verse, I want to remind you, you can't just read it like a book, like a regular book, like a storyline that you just follow until the end. Uh, there, you read about the same events in multiple places. And where we're at timeline-wise here is we are still before the seventh trumpet. Now, we read about the seventh trumpet in chapter 11. And before we saw what was taking place at that seventh trumpet, which was Christ's return, uh, we saw heavenly hosts having a lot to say about Christ's return, but we didn't see Christ's return. There was a pause in that story. And then we've kind of been in this giant pause until we get to and being introduced to multiple people and characters and uh, demons and angels and being really a lot of things explained to us, but as far as the timeline goes, the storyline goes, at this seventh bowl, this is right before the seventh trumpet. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, because all these events are taking place prior to Christ's return, with that being said, let's kind of break this down. Let's kind of break this apart into what is actually happening here, and then we're going to talk about the city in thirds. It says... Uh, the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And we talked about that last time. That's actually, I think, a proper interpretation of that word is, I have caused this. Because uh, that's a definition, that's definitely God saying, This is, this is what I have done. And, and it's an important piece of revelation is always to keep separate, which a lot of people struggle with what God is doing and what man is doing. Because oftentimes we'll do a video on what God has done and people will say, well, that sounds like a nuclear bomb or it sounds like war. And it's like, no, that's what God is doing. So this is what God has done. All right, we'll pick it back up in 18th. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. All right, so this is the greatest earthquake that has ever been on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of wrath. All right, let's just talk about that verse for a second, because there's a lot going on in that verse alone. The great city was divided into three parts. Now, so a city, a, the great city, let's talk about what that city is here in a second, but the great city was divided into three parts. And in addition to that, the cities of the nations fell, and Babylon was remembered before God to give her the fierceness 
of the wrath of God, the wine of the wrath of God. And um, we did a video on the wine of the wrath of God. I'm going to put that link below to know exactly what that, what, what he means when he says the, the fierceness of the wine of the wrath of God. Uh, we did actually, I think, two videos on that during this Revelation series because this has been brought up before. So there's multiple things going on. And then after that, the islands have fled away and the mountains were not found. So there's four things taking place here. There's a great city has been split into three parts. The cities of the nations have fallen. Babylon is remembered before God. And the mountains and the islands are all destroyed. Now, then after that, it starts to hail. So let's kind of break this down into different pieces because you can't talk about all these things as one thing. There's a lot going on here. Let's talk about the city being split into thirds first. So it says here, now the great city was divided into three parts and this and the cities of the nations fell. Period. Now there's a lot of assumptions that people make on what this great city is and we're not going to make any assumptions. We're just going to look at what the Bible says because the Bible is always supported by the Bible. The Bible will always have something supporting it. There's a lot of assumptions that what they're talking about here is Babylon because then it, in the following sentence it says, and great Babylon was remembered before God. Now, we're not going to make that assumption for a couple different reasons. Number one, uh, Babylon is destroyed by things other than earthquakes. I mean, the earthquake doesn't help, but there's lots of things that is, that is destroying Babylon. And we're going to spend the next, you know, all of chapter 17, all of chapter 18, and part of chapter 19, just talking about Babylon and its destruction. So... I just want to kind of <clears throat> make that note that just put that pause in there that this isn't Babylon. Babylon's destroyed in a lot of ways other than an earthquake, and well, including an earthquake in addition to that. Um, I believe this great city is Jerusalem, specifically because much of Revelation and much of prophecy is written about Israel and Jerusalem. And it's often referred to as the great city, but specifically because there is an earthquake in Jerusalem. Now, let's just say this is a worldwide earthquake. But what is taking place here is they're saying, but Jerusalem was split into three parts. Now, there's a couple times where Jerusalem's talked about being split into parts. Number one in Zechariah. Let's talk about that first. In Zechariah chapter 14 this is at christ's return and we'll start in four and in that day his feet will stand on the mount of olives which faces jerusalem on the east and the mount of olives shall be split in two from east to west making a very large valley half of the mountains shall move towards the north and half of it towards the south then you shall flee through my mountain valley for the mountain valley shall reach to azel yes you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come, and all the saints with you. Now here he's talking about splitting the Mount of Olives in two. Now the Mount of Olives is right by Jerusalem. So then there's also a reference to, well, okay, so this is Christ returning the Zechariah's heart. He's talking about his feet standing on the Mount of Olives, and the Mount of Olives being split into two making a large valley for the inhabitants of Jerusalem to be able to flee through him. Now, there's a lot, there's a lot going on in that, first and foremost, uh, and we've done other videos on that, too. But there's a lot of assumptions that can be made. Well, clearly people are alive in Jerusalem. Ple people are clearly still living in Jerusalem when Jesus' feet stand on the Mount of Olives and it is split into two. Let's kind of go back to Revelation 11, verse 13. Here what's taking place is the witnesses have been resurrected and they are, they are taken up. It says, come up here, and they ascend to heaven in a cloud. And it says in verse 13, in the same hour there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. So here we've seen this earthquake. So there's something taking place, and we've, you know, again, <laughs> go back and watch the episodes on on Revelation 11 uh, verses 11 through 14 but a lot of what's happening here is you have two witnesses and I've said multiple times I'm not saying there aren't two prophets on the earth but the two witnesses are, are clearly 144,000 Jews and 
the Gentiles, uh, the, the remnant of Jesus Christ, the Gentiles, are also the ones being raptured up. And I believe it is at that moment that the rapture occurred, right at the end. And I believe what we're seeing in 11, right before, we're right at the seventh trumpet. Because that, again, that's, if you look back at chapter 11, right after this earthquake, all of a sudden there's that seventh trumpet. Or at that earthquake, there's the seventh trumpet. So, you know, I, I'm going to say that this is Jerusalem that's being split into thirds. It's the great city. You know, Babylon is also being remembered. And that's a very important note because once we're done with these verses, the wrath of God is complete. It's, there is no more. <laughs> there's no more plagues and there's no more wrath of God. That is the end. So, you know, it has to be noted that he, he remembers, you know, he remembers Babylon and Babylon is remembered before God. Um, and they gave up. Uh, <laughs> they gave up a lot, and we'll get into that through chapter 17, 18, and a chunk of 19 is all on Babylon. But it's very important to note that we can't assume that just because there's a sentence about Babylon, because there's also a sentence about the cities, you know, or in addition to the sentence about the Jerusalem being split in a third in that in that same sentence, it says then cities and the nations fell, and and then also Babylon was remembered because this earthquake clearly affects the entire planet. Um, it, it, the mountains fall away. The, the cities of the nations have fallen. Uh, it's a worldwide earthquake. It's clearly something big and bad. And at that moment, Israel or uh, Jerusalem cracks into thirds. So again, uh, we'll just kind of go back to that real quick. There's, there's several things going on here. Jerusalem splits into thirds and the cities of the nations fall. Babylon is remembered before God, and the mountains and the islands are all destroyed in this earthquake. And then the hail comes. <laughs> this is, this is, this is kind of, you know, again, it is done. This is the end. This is what God has caused. And it clearly says that his wrath is complete um, in these plagues. So, uh, love to hear your thoughts on all that. I apologize if I made that more confusing. I just kind of want to, I think the timeline is very important at this moment as we talk about the seventh bowl being poured out is, is, is really at that same moment that that seventh trumpet is getting ready to blast. I think that angel is kind of taking in his breath, getting ready to let that, that seventh trumpet rip as that seventh bowl, um, is kind of being rounded up. So... Uh, love to hear your thoughts on all that. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is below. But the most important part of this channel, we take prayer requests. Never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.